So we brought you guys out on a few training runs on that stunning arc of attrition route, just to give you an insight into what the runners are gonna be dealing with on race day. In the last episode, we talked all about my fueling and hydration strategy. So what I'm gonna be eating and drinking out on the route and when I plan on doing it. So that only really leaves one thing to discuss before the big day, and that is the kit that I'll be using to help me along that challenging route. Uh, race kit is always important, no matter what you're running, but when that race just so happens to be on a really challenging section of Cornish Coast Path, 100 miles in distance, and in the depths of winter, obviously that kit list just becomes more important. So let's dive into the video and find out all about the kit I've selected to help me through the arc of attrition. Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. We are four episodes down in our Arc of Attrition series and thanks for joining us for the fifth. Uh, when this goes live on the channel, the race should have actually already started. So if you're tuning in at 7 p.m. on Friday evening, hopefully myself and John will be on our way towards Penzance under the cover of darkness while you sit there in your living rooms watching this video. Uh, there is actually a tracker for the race, so what I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description for that tracker in case you fancy a bit of dot watching tonight. Now you tend to find that most ultras these days will require the runners to carry some sort of mandatory kit list and that'll be made up of lots of different items from head torches, spare batteries, waterproof jackets, spare base layers, first aid kits, survival bags, things like that and you tend to find the more challenging the race the bigger the mandatory kit list. So you can imagine with the art being 100 miles on the coast path in winter, every runner has to carry a fair bit of kit for their own safety. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll pop up the kit list for the arc here on the screen so you can take a look. And as you can see, it's a pretty substantial mandatory kit list. So every runner will have to carry all that kit and they'll have to have it on themselves at all times, all the way to the finish. When you're running a long distance, it just makes everything think super personal and you know the kit the hydration vest the socks the shoes that work really well for me might not work so well for you guys at home so this is why it's so important like with your nutrition that all the items you plan on using on race day have been thoroughly tested in your training and hopefully you've managed to test them in some sort of race like conditions the last thing you want to be doing is pulling on an item of kit at the start of the race or halfway through the race that you've never tried out before because you don't want to find out that uh, the pair of socks you're wearing in a winter 100 miler are causing you blisters after 10 miles because that's not a good place to be and you definitely don't want to be dealing with that. Now you'd think that this is pretty obvious but we do still see runners making this fundamental mistake. When it comes down to my kit for the race a lot of it has been tried and tested over the years but I am actually using a few new items for this year's race so like I said I made sure I got out there on my long runs tested it all thoroughly so that it doesn't cause me any problems come the arc. Now if you've been following the series you'll know that British premium running brand Saw have been super supportive. They're one of our headline sponsors for the series so most of the apparel that I'm going to be using is coming from that brand. Super technical kit and it's definitely going to hold up to any challenging conditions that mother nature chooses to throw at us come race day. Now over the years of running the arc I would say I've seen pretty much every type of weather conditions for the race. From the first run in 2015 where we had glorious blue skies and sunshine for the weekend but boy did it get cold at night I think it dropped to about minus six or minus seven to the point where the sand on Senham Beach was frozen rock solid and then we've got the glorious hurricane year of 2017 we had sort of 70 to 80 mile an hour wind gusts driving rain for pretty much the whole race and the coast path was completely flooded so up on the north cliffs you were running through sections of sort of knee deep water and I've never seen that before um, looking at the long range forecast it looks like we could have ideal running conditions but I've lived in Cornwall long enough to know that things can change very quickly so I tend to go into the arc with a kind of what will be will be attitude and 
position, I just make sure I'm prepared for the worst type of conditions. So let's start from the top and work our way down. Now, if the weather is what it's expecting to be and it's dry and not too cold, I'll probably start the race with a Run For Adventure CL running cap on. And then come nighttime, I'll probably switch over to a sore merino beanie. So I always tend to wear a beanie on my head when I'm running with a head torch, especially if it's gonna be for long periods of time, because it just offers you so much more comfort. If you think about the arc, it's gonna be a winter race, so we're gonna probably have our head torches on our heads for about 12 to 13 hours. So a beanie really can make a big difference. Obviously, with it being merino, it's very comfortable to wear. It's gonna offer me good levels of warmth through the night, but it also wicks the moisture really well and it's nice and breathable. But if the weather does happen to take a turn for the worst, then I'm also going to be carrying their wool tech cap. Now this is completely lined with merino wool, which makes it very, very comfortable to wear for long periods of time. It's super fitted. We've got a nice sort of soft, flexible brim on the front. So again, that's going to protect me from any driving rain. And we've got flaps that come down the sides and cover your ears just for that extra bit of warmth. Finishing off, we've even got a chin strap that stops it getting blown off your head if the wind picks up. So it really does make it the perfect running cap for harsh conditions. But like I said, looking at the long range forecast, a run for adventure running cap should suffice for the majority of the race. So if we do get that dry start to the race like it's been forecasted, I'll probably be on the start line in a Saw's Silk and Merino short sleeve tee base. I'm gonna pair that up with some of their arm warmers and I'll probably have on their brilliant winter running gilet. So I've been using this system a lot on my long runs in my training. It's been working really well. And if you followed the channel, you'll know I'm a big fan of running in a gilet at winter time with arm warmers. I think it's a great system that allows you to adjust things really easy if you're getting too hot or too cold on the move. And it's just great for sort of regulating body temperature. I'll also be carrying the long sleeved equivalent of this in my race vest forming part of my mandatory kit. When it comes to my legs, I am gonna be starting in a pair of sore three season twin shorts so super comfortable very lightweight highly breathable twin short uh, I actually wore these at Hurtwood 50k and they passed the test in flying colors really comfortable to wear they've got that nice fitted soft undershort as well uh, I'll also be carrying in my kit bag uh, their wall tech full length tight um, very comfortable got great rubber grippers on them so they don't slip around but if I'm honest probably won't be putting these on. Uh, I'm not a lover of running in tights. I just tend to get too hot. So only if the weather conditions really turn or the temperatures really drop will you see me in a full legged tight. And under either of those, I am gonna be rocking the brilliant Commando running briefs from TA. Now I've used these for all my long races ever since I reviewed the brand on the channel, just because they're so comfortable to run in. Super soft, really lightweight and highly breathable. And you do feel like you're running with no underwear on and in a good way, obviously. When it comes down to gloves, uh, my hands are something that I really struggle with when it comes to running in cold conditions. And you know, all the body's working hard, the blood's pumping to the muscles, so your extremities can get left behind. And I do struggle with rain hours where my hands get icy white cold and to the point where it's pretty painful. So I'm gonna be carrying lots of glove options. So I've got Saw's winter gloves, so still a pretty lightweight, breathable pair of running gloves. They've got a nice fleecy lining in them and rubber grippers. I've been testing them out on long runs, work really well, but you also need to carry waterproof gloves. So I've got the deck shell waterproof gloves. Now I know they look like a pair of gardening gloves, but they're actually brilliant uh, running waterproof gloves. Again, super fleecy, really warm and fully waterproof. And they've been tested out in some tough conditions. And I'll also carry uh, two or three pairs of your sort of standard lightweight running gloves, just in case. As far as the all important waterproof jacket and trousers, I'll be carrying Saw's Nano Rain Jacket. So a fully waterproof tape seam jacket. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that I tested this out on one of my long runs in some pretty horrendous conditions and it coped with it really well. Seems to fit my body shape really well. Nice and comfortable to run in. It's got a very substantial hood on it that adjusts, pulls in nice and tight around your face so you feel nice and protected. And it's also got a good peak on that hood so I won't have to carry a waterproof cap. 
Nice little feature, clips into the back of the jacket, so again, it doesn't flap around if you haven't got your hood up. And I found it very, very breathable indeed. And that's a really hard thing to achieve with a tape seam waterproof jacket. So yep, the Saw Nano Rain jacket is my jacket for the Arc. Trousers, I'm gonna have my uh, trusty Bonatti Salomon waterproof trousers. I've had these for years. I've probably worn them a handful of times. I like them because they're super lightweight and they pack down nice and tight and really small. So they don't take up a lot of room in my race vest. Again, probably never gonna put these on, especially with the weather that's forecasted, but again, part of the mandatory kit list, so you have to have them with you at all times. When it comes to my running socks of choice for the race, I'm gonna have several pairs with my crew, that is for sure. Uh, from channel favorite stance, Moggins, Saw, and we met the guys from Darn Tough Socks at the running show at the weekend. They make some great socks, US-based, all made in the USA by a small family business. Really quality socks, and they hooked us up with a couple of pairs, so that was really kind. Uh, the thing in common with all the socks is most of them are gonna be merino wool based because I think those type of fabrics handle those wet, muddy conditions of the arc really well. I'm planning on having four or five sort of shoe and sock changes along the way. Uh, I don't normally do this in races, but I do do it in the arc because there's some long stretches of dry running and there's nothing better than you can get into a nice, warm, dry pair of socks and a dry pair of shoes and spend a bit of time in them. Really can give you a massive lift and uh, I'm gonna be planning to do that in the race. Obviously, this is only possible if you have a crew and I'm fortunate enough to have one. My lighting options for that long winter's night, I'll be wearing my running head torch of choice, the brilliant Phoenix HM65 RT. Uh, I've used this torch for a couple of years now and I really get on with it. I just like the simplicity of the functions, even when you're tired and struggling through the night, really easy to flick through the modes. Uh, the build quality, it really is bomb proof, but also very bright. If you put it on that highest setting of 1400 lumens, it really lights up the trail. I'll probably have it on the mid setting. Uh, it gives you a nice bright light, but also a long burn time. So uh, one battery should last me most of that nighttime section. Obviously, I'll have a spare rechargeable battery with me as well because that is part of the mandatory kit. Uh, along with the spare battery, you need a spare torch and spare batteries for it. So my backup light is gonna be the slightly lighter, less powerful HL18RT. Still a great uh, trail running head torch. They've both got that very comfortable, breathable head strap and they have that BOA adjustment, which I really love. Uh, I've found both head torches very comfortable to run with for long periods of time. So it makes them the perfect torches for the arc of attrition. Along with the head torches, I'll also be carrying a very bright hand torch. And this is something that I've done for a lot of years in races where I'm gonna be spending a long time in the darkness. So I'll have Phoenix's PD35 V2, super bright, 1700 lumens. So it really does light up the trail a long way ahead of you and a, a lot further than a head torch can. So you're going through the night, you get fatigued, you get tired, you lose your bearings, you go the wrong way, you lose the path, perfect for picking out the next coast path sign or lighting up the next headland so you can get back in the right direction. Uh, like I say, I've carried one for years and it's got me out of a lot of tricky situations. So even though it's not part of the mandatory kit, I really would recommend carrying one in the Arc of Attrition or any other races where you're gonna be spending a long time running in the darkness. As far as my safety equipment goes, I am gonna have a mini runner's first aid kit and a survival bag from Harrier Trail Running. I've also got a little flashing red e-light from Phoenix. So again, part of the mandatory kit, we need to clip this to our pack and have it flashing at all times. The bonus with this little e-light is it also doubles up as a tiny little hand torch, 200 lumens as well. Pretty amazing for a little unit like that. So again, if all my other lighting options fail, I've still got this to go to. And all that mandatory kit is gonna be packed into a four litre dry bag. I think it's really important to use a dry bag in races like the Arc of Attrition, get everything stowed in it, get it cinched down, keeping it nice and dry, you know. There's nothing worse than having an accident, having to wait for a safety team, hopefully that won't be the case for anyone, reaching for that dry kit and it's soaking wet. So I think a dry bag is an essential piece of kit when it comes to running ultra marathons. 
The next item of my kit might be a little bit controversial because a lot of runners feel that you don't really get the benefit from them in races like the Arc of Attrition. I personally use them every time I've run it and it is running poles. Uh, I think a lot of people maybe get them out a, a little bit too late in the race when they're completely knackered and that doesn't really help. So I tend to get them out quite early within the first 10 miles once I've got a bit of space on the trail and I'll probably have them in my hands for the rest of the race. I think they really help obviously keep that posture nice and upright they help when you're going up and down the hills but they also give you another point of contact in those more technical sort of slippy areas out on the route especially when it's night time uh, my poles of choice uh, Harrier's Brilliant Fixed Length Carbon Pro Poles. Uh, I actually used them to train and for the whole entirety of the race at the TDS and they were brilliant. You know, very comfortable hand grips, nice and light and they pack down nice and small. Uh, to carry them, I will be using uh, Salomon's uh, Pole Quiver and I'll have that attached to my race vest. Speaking of packs or hydration vests, I am going to be using the very reliable Salomon Advanced Skin 12 set. Now, I've used a version of this pack for years and years now. And in fact, I think I've only probably run two or three ultra marathons in a different model or make of vest. Uh, it's never let me down. It has been thoroughly tested, that's for sure. I just like the fact it's so comfortable, nice and lightweight, nice and breathable. You hardly know you're wearing it. But I also love the fact it's got so much accessible storage. So you can pretty much fit all the kit you need while you're on the move and you can access that nice and easily. And I think that's a really important feature to have on our running vests. On top of all this kit, I'll also be carrying a, a couple of buffs or multi wraps, you know, super functional piece of trail running kit and you should never leave home without one. Also, the all important little tub of Vaseline. I'll have this in my race pack because you need to stop that chafing in its tracks super quick, that's for sure. And a uh, spare kit with my crew, so long sleeve, short sleeve tops, spare shorts, spare waterproof jackets. I'll just load it all up into plastic boxes and chuck it in the back of the wagon. It's great to have lots of kit with you just in case, just in case you need it, but it also might help another runner out of a tricky situation. And now the moment that you've probably all been waiting for, what is going to be my shoe choice for the Arc of Attrition? Uh, it really is a tricky route to uh, decide what trail running shoe to wear because, you know, you've got long sections of super challenging, very technical, very slippy trail and you really want a lot of grip and traction from the outsole on your shoe. And then you've got long sections of the dreaded tarmac, so it does make things awkward and difficult. Obviously, lots of runners run the race in just one pair of shoes, but you know, I'm fortunate enough to have a crew, so I'm gonna make the most of that. And uh, I will be switching in and out of shoes along the way for different parts of the route. So I'll definitely have a couple of pairs of my favorite Socony Exodus Ultras with me. Uh, I've got the Run Shield version, so the water repellent shoe, and I've got the standard one. Probably gonna start in these, I think, because the, the trails are still gonna be very wet underfoot. Uh, probably not the the deepest of lug on the outside and I might struggle in uh, areas but it's just so comfortable to run in for my foot shape. You know I did the 80 miles at Endure 24 and I was on my feet for 38 hours at the TDS in a pair of these and I had no foot issues at all. No rubbing, no irritation and no blisters. So it's just a very comfortable shoe for me. Uh, I'll also have in with my crew a pair of Innovates X Talon uh, Ultra 260 V2s. Super luggy outsole, eight mil lug on that shoe. So I'll probably put them on at Land's End and run that tricky section to St. Ives. Should give me plenty of grip and traction through those challenging areas at Pendine and at Zena. Uh, I'm also, Gonna have a pair of Salomon uh, S-Lab Genesis uh, with my crew. I've been doing a lot of training in this shoe. My last long run was in this and it's very, very comfortable. So I'm probably gonna put these on when I leave St. Ives and stay in them all the way to the finish. It'll be nice to get in a, a dry pair of socks and a dry shoe at St. Ives, that's for sure. But I could see myself spending most of the time in the Exodus Ultra. There you have it, that is all the kit that I'm gonna be using for this year's Arc of Attrition. I'm actually filming this video the day before the race, so I'm now gonna go away, get everything organized, packed away, sort out my mandatory kit, get my nutrition organized um, for my crew to pick up. Uh, we're gonna be heading to registration tonight just to get that done so we don't have to faff around with it in the morning. Uh, like I said earlier, 
If you are running this year, I really hope everything's gone to plan and you're just getting super excited about taking on this awesome race. And hopefully we'll get to meet some of you guys on the start line. I just want to say a massive thanks to Phoenix and Saw for sponsoring this short arc of attrition series. You know, it's going to be awesome to have some great kit to take on this challenging race. And the support has been really, really appreciated. Don't forget the kind folk from Saw have given our viewers this discount code. So if you input this code at checkout, you'll get a massive 15 percent saving off any purchases don't forget if you have enjoyed the series if you've enjoyed this video if it's been helpful to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel but for now guys thanks for watching thanks for supporting it's really appreciated we'll see you guys on the other side and as always stay safe and keep on running And then come night time, I'll probably switch over to a saw merino beanie. And then at night, I'll probably switch over to a saw merino beanie. A dry sock on your foot and a dry shoe and, and blah, 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 blah. It really feels like you're not actually running in under, in under any anywhere. <laughs> yeah, it feels like you're not running in any.